Welcome to Robin's Nest Adventures. Today our adventure is going to be putting an overhang over my bedroom door, which comes out on my deck. So you can see here, this is an antique French door that I had put in um, after the build. There was a sliding glass door here that encompassed both the um, window and the door, but it was leaking as well. Up here, if you look close, you can see how the paint is coming off already, and it's only been here for like a year and if you look inside you can see the damage that it has done to my bamboo flooring um, there's nothing I can do about that except cover it up with a doormat which I pretty much keep it covered up anyway I wasn't feeling very knowledgeable about how to put an overhang here underneath that eave and have it be high enough that people could get in and out. So I consulted with my friend JD, who is very knowledgeable on all things building and doing the math, and he's going to arrive in a little while and help me put it on. All right, this is my friend JD, and he has offered to build this wonderful frame for my um, overhang, and him describe what he did um, and how he figured the the pitch and everything, which were all things that I was having a hard time doing. So, JD, take it away. Uh, well, uh, thanks for letting me help you first. Oh, um, thank you. You know, what I did is use some trigonometry to figure out how, mu how much of a drop, different degree angles we're going to give us between where we come off the house and what's out here. You don't want something so low out here that a person that's relatively tall can walk out the door and smack that, you know, not yeah. much fun. So we went with a fairly low 10 degree angle um, and with that we only get about five inches of drop uh, as it comes out. But seeing as how we have the, the metal roofing for it, which is um, very impervious, that shouldn't be a problem. I don't see those being a problem. So at any rate, built this uh, frame using a combination of a chop saw and a radial arm saw. One of the things we did so that we got good joint between what's going to lay up against the house that supports it and what's on the back of it is we did this half lap joint here you can see where we cut half off of each one of them and lay them together yeah yeah that looks nice and strong it, it should be the rest of them are just screwed in joints and then there are brackets in the corners um, that are galvanized with uh, and I think that will be adequately strong to hold everything together for a good many everything is put together with screws and one of the things we tried to do as much as we could is get screws so they don't just screw straight into the end grain. So these screws are all angled up like so, so that it's okay. kind of halfway cross grain because screws into end grain doesn't work very well. If you take screws in end grain, really what it does is just chop up, chop up the grain, and you can actually take the screw and just pull the whole thing out and just pull all those um, fibers out that you've sheared, up, sheared off. I had no idea. I think yeah. I've done that probably a lot. A lot of people do, but it's yeah. Just, so, yeah. So all of these are attempted to be angled so they're not just straight into the end grain, but they're kind of doing a... Yeah, 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 cool. Okay, well, another thing that he was telling me is that I didn't want the bra the angle braces there to be obvious anyway, but right now you can't tell. I have a shower here, and there's a shower stall that comes out, and a tall person might walk out and bang their head on this if he didn't make it pretty, pretty short, but I'm trusting that it is plenty sturdy and it's going to hold together and not fall down. And it's not that big anyway. 
So here we go. We're gonna. And that's it. There, there's not that much weight that it has to support, yeah. so I think it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have over here. I didn't throw any scraps away on my house, and really everything has come in pretty handy because I'm, I'm finding that I'm pulling things out and using scraps. This is a leftover piece. I don't know if it's floor or wall or roof, but we're gonna use that as the base wood. And then I had, um, there's membrane on the roof underneath my antique tin, which is here. And I've cut this antique tin, which is on the house. And I have a ton of that left over for future projects that I'll be doing. But we have this sticky backed uh, roofing material that we're just going to stick on underneath the tin in case there are previous holes made so that it won't leak. All right, let's get busy. Okay, we're just going to cut off this little tab here to make this roughly a straight edge so that we can um, get it to fit to our frame. This It's been designed with, Robin gave me the measurements of this, we should have about an inch overhang on three sides and the up, upper side should butt up pretty much to the wall. Great. All right. Well, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> In actuality, I would normally use like safety glasses for this repair. Safety glasses. What? It's stuff in their eyes. Okay, so he's marked everywhere that he with that there's a board, so he'll know where to screw that in. Yeah, just, you know, you could probably guess, but you always wind up with a couple of screws that wind up being somewhere else. <laughs> and so, uh, it's just a little easier to spend a little more time to do it right to begin with. Um, so I've gone ahead and put some marks on here using a, um, a tape measure and a Sharpie. And uh, now we're just turning those into lines all the way along it so that we've got those. Now, as far as positioning this, we're just going to position it so we've got the same amount of overhang on each end. And what we want to do is just take a straight edge here and butt it up against the straight edge and say, okay, we're good. I said he was going to help me, but actually he's probably just going to do it and I'm going to be his assistant. And it's screwed down, and the next step will be putting this sticky Back backed yeah. paper, That's tar paper actually, stuff on. actually going to work better with both of us, where we can actually take the thing and... Yeah. Um, oh, we're a little short there, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So your other piece, we're going to have to cut kind of some long strips off of it. Okay. Let's just let's plan what that's going to look like. It would be a smart thing to do. So, this piece is a little short, too. So what we're going to have to do is take part of this and run it down that side, right? right? Okay. But we should be able to do that. Okay. So let's actually trim it after we've got it on. Sounds like a plan. You know? So that's actually what I was thinking. Good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this back off of here. It may not be very sticky, but I don't think that's really going to matter. Yeah, the good thing about not being very sticky is it lets us kind of position it nicely. And oh, yeah, well, a little bit more here. See, like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. But I can hold it down while you cut it. And it's left in the right direction. Yeah. Right to the slope yeah. is going to be going this way. Right. So your water's going to run in this way. And so that's. So, what we want to do, like you talked about, is we want to do that. Okay, great. Next thing is the tin then, before it blows away. This tin, I bought um, an entire roof that had been taken off an old house not too, not too far away from me. Um, 
I'm not really sure which end. I know we want to overlap it so that that's on, so that this, what that's was on the bottom before was on the bottom, but right. I cut it and it's pretty sharp. So well. I guess I'll put the cut edge on the, on the, on the out end because right. that's, yeah. So it says is probably what we're going to do is take this and put yeah. this over here. And then, well, we actually have a bare edge on both pieces because it was one piece and I cut it. So. That's right. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. Okay. Now let's get our overhangs equivalent from both ends. Right? Yeah. We'll just feel it. We've got our, our lap joint right. And we're to the middle of the hump here. We're, now we've got to go this way just a little bit more. You kind of see what I'm doing? Yep. Want this overhang to be the same on both sides, and yeah. I think Aesthetic aesthetically, and it's, then there's plenty down there at that end. Okay. So what do we fix this with now? Screws okay. that have a. They've got a gasket on them. They have a gasket on them. So here's a a view of the screw with a gasket. Do you have the driver for these? Um. Yes, I can come up with a driver for these. So, you know, you have to get it in just right. If you drill it too far down, it doesn't work. If you don't put it down enough, it doesn't seal. And this will, of course, shove back up against the head. So we've decided to put the holes, put a screw everywhere there's already a hole. As much as anything to plug the holes. Right. right. And then add more screws where we need to add them. And, um, and we're debating whether we really need to pre-drill holes or not, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Try it without doing it and see what happens. Yeah. We have all this screwed down with a, a screw in every hole that was there before and some extra just to make sure it stays down. We get a lot of wind down here, so he's put a lot of screws on both ends to help hold it and to help us prop up the piece. Right. I need that screw bit again. Oh, okay. Okay, and then he's going to do the same thing on this other side. Yes. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-start some screws in here so we're not trying to juggle screws and drills and this structure and everything else at the same time. This way we don't have to mess with the screws. And once we get a couple of screws in, it's going to hold all right, and then we can kind of come back and figure out exactly where we want to put them because it would be best if it winds up being our screws go through the back of here and wind up being in, in like this board not over this hollow area. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get better purchase on our screws with that. Yeah. So we will go ahead and do that. We've got our cleats up here and it will actually do a large, it'll do all the positioning and a large part of the holding. So and it's going to go right up against the, the uh, soffit, is that? Uh, yeah, or about a half enough? an inch down. Yeah, yeah. We okay. measured 17 inches and the, the cleats are 17 a and a half. Yeah, okay. so just... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, so we're going to start out with just three or four screws. I'm not worried about screws in the bottom end of it because it's not going to be trying to pull out. Right. It's going to be actually pushing in against oh, the yeah. wall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So really the screws in the bottom end of it just keep those from moving around much. Right. It's right. the ones at the top end they'll try to pull out. Okay. 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 All righty then. Now we got to get our muscles out. We got to get this thing uh, positioned. We're setting on our two cleats, uh, which if I've measured correctly should uh, align. And then all we need to do is get a couple of screws in just to hold it initially. And then we're going to step down and take a look at it and go, yeah, it look okay. If we need to, we might have to okay. shift it around a little bit. This is going to be heavier than you think. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I didn't carry it up here, so. You going up? You 
yours, man. Let me see. It's got to shift my way, though. Well, mine is not... Is not going under there. Can you lift it up a little bit? Let's go ahead and let's put it back down and let's take the cleats out. Let's drop them an inch. Okay. Well, doesn't always work perfectly. You know, sometimes you need a trial run. Yeah. yeah. So he had his braces a little bit too high up. Yep. Yeah. Lower that board down and then and then it will just drop down on it. 